Good morning, Rick. How are you doing? Hey, Errol. I'm terrific. Thank you so much. Is it safe to say that you've been to hell and back, and you want to make sure that people know of what hell you've been through and to kind of prepare them for what could be in front of them? I've been to hell and back too many times to count, Errol. Oh, uh, and those are some of the stories I tell in the book. But, you know, for me, it was all about being a witness to history, being mm-hmm. on the front lines of major events and incidents, and I was. And part of the book is about how we got there. Uh, behind the scenes stuff, things that people don't maybe think about or realize, of the challenges of, of putting a story on the air in, in sometimes just very challenging conditions. So that's, that's one of the reasons why I wanted to write the book, is to sort of uh, tell people about how we got there uh, and how, how these stories made air, but also um, what went into it and, and, and how the crazy story of my life of, of, of figuring out, you know, how to not be a, a waste right. for the rest of Right. right. I, I, I'm I such was. a I'm, I'm a, a history freak. And so I, I get it when you say that, you know, you want to be there and you want to document the history because it's too easy to set things aside. And then people wonder, well, what was it like? Well, why weren't you taking notes? Yeah, well, I took a lot of notes yeah. and that helped me tremendously. In fact, I saved all of my reporter notebooks over the years. And if not for that, I, I it would have been really tough to write this. But I had notebooks from from 30 years ago, from from hurricanes, from. Afghanistan, from Iraq, from 9-11, the actual notebook I had in my hand when I was taking notes when the towers came down. I have that notebook. Mm. And so inside those pages were anecdotes and interviews and notes, uh, observations, and all of those things were were really helpful to me when I was trying to paint the picture of what we were doing on that day and on so many other days. I'm a daily writer, and I can relate with you when when the towers came down, except I got to see it on, on the flat screen, thanks to people like yourself. And and to go back there and to read that, I, I can't even figure out how emotional I was, and I was able to put it on paper. So what was it like for you to be in that state of mind? Uh, being on the ground uh, on 9-11 was definitely the most challenging day of my career Hmm. it was awful and surreal and just really rattling you know it it was hard to stay calm really hard to stay focused but that was my job and if i didn't then our viewers weren't going to know what was going on if i if i was panicking then they would probably panic and you know it it was it took everything i had to not let my own emotions get in the way. I just steeled myself. I gathered as much information as I could from anyone who was able and willing to talk, which was in itself a challenge. And then I would just report on what we could see and hear. The the, the cell towers were on the top of the towers that fell. So, you know, we had no phone service, and it was really hard to get accurate information. So I was just relying on eyewitness testimony and, and you know, interviews and, and just telling the story of, of the insanity on the streets of lower Manhattan on that day and then for weeks after. We're talking about chasing catastrophe today. Uh, where did where was the seed planted? Somebody along your journey had to look at you in the eyes, Rick, and say, you've got it, but let's take it even a little bit further. <laughs> well, I, I, it took me a while to figure it out, and that's another chapter in the book about how, how to, you know, get my stuff together and and. and pursue that career I I dropped out of college twice I had a 0.27 grade point average and I and I hung a finished sheetrock for two and a half years and I did a bunch of other jobs including doorman and different nightclubs and eventually I was like you know what I want to I want to do something I need a career and I need to do something meaningful and I went back to school and I and I took a careers class and I was like yes I should be a reporter because I did the morning announcements in high school. I wrote for the school <laughs> paper. You know, I, I acted in school plays and I was a side of a class clown I was like okay I can do this and once I started actually focusing on reporting, I realized that I was pretty good at it. And it took me a while to get really good at it. But, you know, I spent 10 years in local news. And by the time I got to Fox News Channel, man, I was ready to go. Yeah. And, uh, and, and go I did out the door for so many major events in our lifetime. And go you still do in the way that you're reaching that new listener, which is through your podcasting. Was that was there yeah. an adjustment period with that with your wife and stuff like that? Because, I mean, listen, podcast listeners are a unique brand. Yeah. Well, for those who don't know, I'm married to the former Kelly Dodd from the Real Housewives of Orange County. And when I left Fox News, 
I was like, well, why don't we just do a show together? You know, and I really, honestly, I want to do a morning show with Kelly. She is just amazing. <laughs> She's so funny and just so uh, unpredictable. But but what we're doing now on YouTube and on Patreon.com at the Daily Smash and our Rick and Kelly show is just complete departure from what, I, from what I'm used to. And half the time I'm just looking at her going, you know I used to cover wars, right? You know I used to cover hurricanes. And we're talking about, you know, a housewives thing or some gossip this or that. But you know what? It, it, it's not like I'm embarrassed by it on any level. It's just it's it's something different. It's fun for me, and, and it's it's a departure, and it's and it's 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 uh, it's challenging in its own way. But it's it's more than anything else. I just I love working with her, and so uh, you know it's, we're 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 doing great at it, and and I'm I'm always looking for the next big opportunity for both of us. Being here in Charlotte, this is Dale Earnhardt country. He's, you know, his his homeland is right up there in Kannapolis. And so for you to be there at that track, I mean, I know how we felt at that race when, when, when we were watching it on the TV. Yeah, that was my first NASCAR race. And Fox had just gotten the rights to broadcast Daytona and NASCAR. And so they sent me down there to cover it. And I didn't know what the protocol was. I'd never done that before. So... The, the day of the race, I grabbed my cameraman. We went down, you know, we were at pit row, and we were, I said, let's go to Dale Earnhardt's car. And we stood there on the other side of the wall, you know, the short little wall dividing us from, from the race cars. And he was there with Dale Jr. Mm. and their wives, and they were in a prayer circle. And we videotaped him and, and his family. And then we got him getting in the car and putting his helmet on, the whole thing. And I was hoping to get an interview with him. But, I, you know, that's not how it works. Mm. And the race started, and the, that was the last time he set foot on this earth because, you know, the last turn of the last race, he hit that wall. And, I mean, it was a horrible event to to, to be a part of, but it's, it's in the book because of there was so much there. And, and uh, it was a story that I thought should be told again. Okay, you guys be brilliant today. Okay, Rick, please come back to the show in the future. I would love to. Thank you so much.